This is a tutorial on hyperbolas as conic sections. A conic section that's shaped like a hyperbola comes from when our intersecting plane intersects our double cone in more than one place. When that happens, we get the shape of a hyperbola. Any hyperbola that has its center at the origin can be written as a standard form equation in the form of x squared over a squared minus y squared over b squared is equal to 1. An example of a hyperbola that's written in standard form would be x squared over 25 minus y squared over 49 is equal to 1. An example of a hyperbola that's not written in standard form, well that would be 25x squared minus 100y squared minus 100 is equal to 0. Even though this equation is not written in standard form, there are some clues that we can use that tell us that this is a hyperbola. First off, both x and y are both squared. So this could be a circle, an ellipse, or a hyperbola. Next we look at the coefficients of our x and y terms, and they're different. So that means this cannot be a circle. This has to be an ellipse or a hyperbola. But notice that these coefficients are different signed, or they're being subtracted. That is the clue that this is the equation of a hyperbola. So if I take a plane and I intersect my double cone, and I was looking straight onto my plane and I could see the intersection of my cone and my plane, so I saw the shape of my hyperbola, and I imagined a coordinate axis on top of that shape, then I could take my coordinate axis and my hyperbola and I could put it on a graph and it would look something like this. This is the graph of a hyperbola. Notice that this hyperbola has two vertices. Also know that it has two foci which are depicted in red. A hyperbola is a special shape because every point that makes up this hyperbola has the same difference of distances to these two foci. For example, if I chose this point on my hyperbola and I measured the distance from that point to both of my foci, if I called this first distance, distance 1, and this other distance, distance 2, and then I chose a different point on my hyperbola, say I chose this point down here. And again, if I measured the distance from that point to both of these foci, and I called this distance 3 and distance 4, well then the absolute value of distance 1 minus distance 2 is equal to the absolute value of distance 3 minus distance 4. This is the same for every point on the hyperbola. Regardless of what point I pick on the hyperbola, the absolute value of the difference of that point's distances to both foci is the same. Now the last thing we have to talk about on this hyperbola is that it's symmetrical across two different axes. Both of these axes pass through the center of our hyperbola, which in this case is the origin. Our hyperbola is symmetrical across the y-axis, and it's also symmetrical across the x-axis. This x-axis, or this axis of symmetry, this one passes through the center, the foci, and the vertex. Whichever axis of symmetry passes through all three of these types of points, the foci, the vertices, and the center, this axis is called the transverse axis. So now let's compare the standard form equation of a hyperbola to the graph of a hyperbola. In the standard form, it's these a and b terms that define the shape of our hyperbola. 
Notice this hyperbola has two foci and two vertices. Our transverse axis in this case is the x-axis. And also notice that we have two asymptotes that define our parabola drawn in with a green dotted line. Also notice that we have this box that our asymptotes intersect and these asymptotes meet at the center of our parabola which is at the origin. Now this box is defined by A and B. A is underneath our x variable. So if I go to the center of my hyperbola and I go in the x direction A units, I'll find the edge of my box. If I go in the other direction along the x-axis, A units, I'll find the other edge of my box. Now my B term is underneath my y variable, so if I go B units in the y direction, positively, I'll hit the other edge of my box. And if I go down or in the negative y direction B units, I hit the bottom edge of my box. If you use this information and look closely, that means the slope of these asymptotes would be negative b over a or positive b over a. In fact, the equation of these asymptotes would be y is equal to negative b over a x or y is equal to positive b over a x. So that's how you can use a and b to find the asymptotes that define our hyperbola. Now the last thing we need to be able to find is the location of our foci. Our foci are always on the transverse axis and they're c distance away from the center of the hyperbola. Now the equation we use to find c is that c squared is always equal to a squared plus b squared. Notice that this is similar to an ellipse except our a and our b are being added instead of subtracted. So once you know your a and b, you can always find your c distance. And again, the c is the distance along the transverse axis from the foci to the center. Now there are two different hyperbolas that you will see. Some open in the positive and negative x direction and some open in the positive and negative y direction. The way to tell the difference is that if y is being subtracted then your hyperbola will open in the positive and negative x direction. If it's x that's being subtracted or x that has the negative in front of it then your hyperbola will open in the positive or negative y direction. So now let's try finding the foci of this hyperbola. Our hyperbola has the equation x squared over 25 minus y squared over 144 is equal to 1. This equation is written in standard form. Remember standard form looks like x squared over a squared minus y squared over b squared is equal to 1. Or sometimes it's written y squared over b squared minus x squared over a squared is equal to 1. These are really the same thing except our hyperbola opens in the x direction for our first equation and in the y direction for our second equation. Here x squared over 25 minus y squared over 144, our y squared is being subtracted, which means our hyperbola is going to open in the positive and negative x direction. This also means that our a squared term is equal to 25. Our b squared term, well that's equal to 144. 
If you took the square root of these two numbers, you'd find out that a is equal to 5 and b is equal to 12. Now if we're trying to find the foci, we can use the equation c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared. If I plug in a and b into this equation, I'll get c squared is equal to 5 squared plus 12 squared. So c squared is equal to 25 plus 144. c squared would then be equal to 169, and if you took the square root of both sides, you'd find out that c is equal to positive or negative 13. Except c is a distance, so we don't worry about the negative distance. We just have c is equal to 13. So we know that our foci is a distance of 13 units away from the center of our hyperbola. But that doesn't tell us the location of our foci. When you deal with all conic sections, it's always easiest to sketch a graph of what's going on. We know our a and b values. They're 12 and 5. b is underneath the y, so we're going to go in 12 units in the y direction, and 12 units down in the y direction. A is underneath the x variable, so we're going to go 5 units from the center in the positive x direction and in the negative x direction. If I draw the box that's defined by these points, I can use this box to tell what my asymptotes are going to look like. So my hyperbola is going to be defined by these asymptotes. I also go back to my original equation. It's y that's being subtracted. So again, this is going to open in the positive and negative x directions. Our vertices are at the edge of this box. So our hyperbola should look something like this. Because our hyperbola opens in the positive and negative x direction, that's going to make our x-axis our transverse axis. And that means that our foci are on the transverse axis. So they're going to be 13 units along the transverse axis from our center. So here's our center, and if I go 13 units along our transverse axis, in this case the x-axis, I'll be going from 0, 0 to 13, 0. And if I go the other direction, c units, or 13 units, I'll come to the point negative 13, 0. So I've just found the foci. My foci are the points 13, 0 and negative 13, 0. But before I could find them, I had to figure out which was the transverse axis and I had to solve for C.